I'm going to show you how to deploy an open VAS function using Python. We'll then trigger it with auto scaling and we'll see what happens. Uh, Python is a very popular language, it is not the only one supported by open VAS. So let's switch over to Visual Studio Code. And as you can see, I've got some basic instructions about what we're going to do here. First thing we want to do, use the open VAS CLI. We're going to go to the template store. I'm going to list the templates that are available in the store. Now with each of these, they're actually are just really uh, a Docker file and some metadata. I'm going to pull in the one that we're going to use for this demo from the store. We can see this will be downloaded to the current directory and we can actually explore it. We can see this uses a, a, a Docker file to add the contents in, to run tests, to install pip modules. And we can also see our handler here. So if we ever wanted to customize this, we could do that. All right. Next, once we have the template, we want to create a new function. So type in new language name of a template and then where we want this to go uh, it has to be put into a, a registry a container registry you can host your own you can use a, a cloud hosted registry I'm going to use the docker hub and then I'm going to give this a name of py1 and what that has done it's generated us a stack yaml this is the open fast yaml format and uh, we've got a tag of the version of this that's going to be put into the registry and we can actually have multiple functions here if we want all in one file. Now the handler, as you can see, there's no Docker file now. That's all abstracted away and, and brought in every time we do a build. We just focus on what we want to come back here. So we go hello from openfans, we put .com, since this video demo is for the homepage. And I think that's all we need to now go and deploy that fast CLI, we use up and we'll do this to my gateway that is exposed on the internet. Now we're just going to put the name of the, the stack YAML file. If you rename this to stack YML, um, you don't actually have to use that flag. So that's something that I always like to do. Okay, so it's been deployed and we have a URL for it. What we can now do it's fancy line list and this shows all the functions we've got including py1 the fact that it's had no invocations yet we can also go describe it and I've just put py1 now we can see that it's ready for invocations the URL the container image in case you want to check that version even how much RAM and CPU is using there's an invocation and we got hello from openfast.com we didn't get a new line on that. That's quite normal for a HTTP response. Um, and we could probably put one in there. Or we could maybe just change this. Hello from the Python HTTP template. Now let's run FastCLI up again. Now one thing I always like to do is I like to change the version so that I know for sure what we are going to get in the cluster is a brand new container image. Okay, so. As we curl this now, we're going to, well, we were going to hit the old version, but that was actually so fast uh, that we didn't get a chance. But what tends to happen in Kubernetes is the old version continues running until the new version comes up. Now, this is the OpenFAS dashboard. And if you've used the old UI, you'll see that we can actually save the password in the browser now unless you're using single sign-on, in which case you might log in with something like Google Workspace. So right, sign in. Here's my namespaces. This is the one that you usually have. Let's go and see what's in it. Okay, so we have our PY1 function deployed two minutes ago to invocations. From here, we can go look at the logs and we can go back further if we have that history and we can also invoke it through this UI as well and get our response back below. One of the things that you will also find uh, probably quite useful is just a generic rundown of invocations, how many we've had, 
uh, the, the complete usage of the function. And we can also input metadata when we deploy the function so that um, we can click a link. It puts a hot link in there. So then back on the main view, repository will link to it. The char, if you set it from CI CD, will then take you directly to the commit. And you can see what changed. Now, monitoring is also very important. So here we have our, our dashboard uh, and PY1. We can see the, the request per second is a current scaling metric on that. It hasn't needed to scale. We still only have one replica of that in the cluster. CPU and RAM, we can measure it down here as well, 51 megs. Uh, the status codes and average duration of each request is very, very quick at the moment. So one thing we can now do is we can use a load testing tool like Hey to go generate some load on here. Let's say for the next 30 seconds, we'll have 20 uh, concurrent requests. We don't want to go over, let's say, 200 requests per second. All right. So this tool is now running in the background. And we should probably see on this page, the invocations are already at 5,000. 10,000, just over 10,000, 15,000. Okay, so it's being invoked very, very quickly. Uh, we've got lots and lots of logs for that. The Python function is running there. And the replica count has gone up. So we now actually have four replicas in the cluster. We've got 15 replicas. And this is because we're really hammering this function. It's getting over 700 requests per second right now. Um, even more than that, it just keeps going up. Uh, here we can see our replicas, the CPU for all of those replicas within the whole cluster, and the average RAM, uh, or the complete amount of RAM across all of those replicas as well. Behind the scenes, open FAS, uh, as you can see, we're all 200 responses, that's what we want. We don't wanna scale up and then start getting errors. Uh, the test is completed here. Now this may be getting throttled by my uh, load balancer. Um, that, that could be the case. We had like a thousand requests per second. We weren't really doing much there. Um, we could probably put a lot more through with more concurrent threads. If we go have a look at pods, we'll see that we, well, we're already back to one. So in a very short space of time, we had a massive spike of 30 seconds we then scaled back down very, very quickly, and we're back to where we were again. Now you can also scale to zero, whereby when you look on this dashboard, rather than one replica for these functions that frankly, they've been idle for a very long time, this is my demo environment, they'd get scaled to zero. When that happens, you can have fewer nodes in your cluster. Fewer nodes is less money per month, and so that way you can save money. Now, the last thing I'll show you very quickly, because this is this is probably something that you're definitely going to want to do, is you take your requirements text file, and let's say we have a pip module, requests. Let's reference that inside our function and see how we can use it. So we'll go response equals request.get, get google.com, that's fine. Um, so we get a status code back. What else could we get? I think there maybe is a text. It's either text or data. So now we have these variables, we can actually put them into the body if we want. And we could say um, upstream status is red status code. And we could say upstream body is upstream body, res.text. That's either text or data. I don't 100% remember, but this is the beauty. Um, we can actually test this out without deploying it to the internet, simply through local run. What that is doing is doing a normal build, and then we're, we're going to be running this on our local machine. Um, well, that actually worked. So we have the body, there's a lot of text here, but if you look carefully, we have the upstream body, which is the res.txt. We then have the uh, upstream status. So we could put instead perhaps uh, bytes, and then we could just 
return the length instead. Do another local build. And in this case, we can see that particular website we went to returned a certain amount of bytes. Great. One other thing that um, is quite interesting is that we have good examples for these. So if you want to connect to a database, you say you've created a table, you're collecting users or orders, um, it's very easy to do a SQL query from within your function, whatever language that is. Okay. And as I say, the whole time, we have our detailed metrics. We're able to see what has been consumed within the cluster, um, whether anything's going wrong, and this gives you a lot of power. So from nothing at all to a function deployed, load tested by potentially real users in, what, less than 10 minutes. So if you want to try this out, go check out the documentation, reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Um, and then it's just really over to you to what you want to build.